We have a six and a half inch two-way speaker closed box. Very easy to manufacture. The components being used in this particular project are intended to be a low cost entry level uh, speaker project. So this happens to be a GRS, although if you get the plans, you'll find that I went ahead and calculated a number of other speakers that'll work with this enclosure. Uh, so this is a GRS, pretty highly rated little six and a half inch speaker. And then the Dayton Audio Tweeter, uh, Soft Dome, pretty nice product. Uh, it's one of my favorites. I think it's one of the better tweeters you can get for the money, um, pretty accurate. And so a white chimp on that tweeter. On the back, I went ahead and made a metal bracket that uh, holds your input terminals and then it also holds the crossover. That's a Dayton Audio crossover, um, crossover at 2500 hertz, 2 way. The material you're going to want to use is three quarters MDF, and that's not to be confused with particle board. The MDF will provide you with a much smoother finish, and it's a bit more dense, so that the cutting quality is going to be a lot nicer. To get the straightest cuts, you'll want to use a table saw with a medium fine blade. Once you get your parts cut, you can move on to your dados and rabbits. This is a special blade on the table saw. Uh, it's either a wobbler blade or you have one that spaces out to the proper width of the cut you're going to make. This can also be done using a uh, router with an edge guide. For the rear panel, it requires both a cutout and a recess, and you can cut out the location for uh, either using a scroll saw, jigsaw, CNC router. There's lots of options available. For the recess, go ahead and use a router with an edge guide, or if you have more advanced equipment, you can use that as well. It also requires drill holes to be used, so pay attention to those in the instructions. The front panel and the grill cover will require a little bit more care, so these locations will have to be circle cut and then recess, and then they'll also require some holes being drilled. Um, in order to do this, you really want to have a circle guide for your router or something else that you can get a nice circle cut out that the re speaker will recess into that location. However, if all else fails, uh, use a scroll saw or a jigsaw in order to do your circle cut. Just take your time. You'll still need to do an edge uh, with a router and uh, do the recess. At this point, your board should be cut and pretty well completely done. There's probably a little bit of edge uh, routing on it, but otherwise pretty well done. But it's time to move on to the other parts and gaskets happens to be one of those. You'll need a gasket for the woofer because the woofer is intended to be a front mount and you'll want a gasket for the rear of the woofer that will fit into the recess. You'll also want a gasket that goes around the mounting plate which holds the crossover. The easiest way to cut out the gaskets is using an X-Acto knife or similar type of knife. To make the rear panel, this is made from aluminum and any metal blade that can be used in any of your saws can also be used for this. A little bit of time and care taken, you'll get a nice straight cut and the edges can be cut and ground to fit into the rear panel on your speaker back plate. The decorative ring is quite similar. It's using th thinner material even, so this can be cut a lot easier with any type of sh metal saw. The mounting feet called out as part of the bomb uh, are really optional. If you prefer to have mounting feet, there's a diagram that shows where to put the hole pattern on the bottom of your speaker box. Um, if you choose not to have mounting feet, you can just eliminate that step. At this point, we're ready for assembly. The speaker enclosure only intends to use glue and clamps and once you get those together then the entire box will be tightly snug and all of your joints will look good. Once the glue is dried you'll want to sand it to finish and probably do a round over on the edges with your router. If needed use a wood fill material and sand smooth. At this point, you're ready to seal your project. Uh, the MDF is really going to absorb paint like crazy. You want to do a good sealer on your bare wood and uh, if needed you can sand that down as well. Once this is completed you can paint to finish. I generally use a nice quality with uh, texture or hammer tone. Seems to work very well at covering up any imperfections that might be on the wood surface. Paint your speaker grill frame black and you don't have to be too careful here. All we're trying to do is make it so that the wood color doesn't show through. Once that is complete use a speaker frame fabric and a screen door spline 
and using the spline tool push that spline into the groove and that'll tighten up the speaker fabric. Now we're to the final assembly, hooking up the speakers to the crossover, putting on the back plate, throwing the decorative ring on with a little bit of adhesive, and away you go. So that wasn't so bad. Uh, should be a fun project. Hope you enjoyed it. So anyway, check them out. There's going to be lots more to come as well. Uh, keep on the lookout for, for our uh, new projects in the future. BritsAudio.com. Talk to you later.